If you and I had been around 400 million years ago, we wouldn't have seen any flowering plants, just mosses and liverworts. Their ancient evolutionary origins are reflected in their unusual biology. Here's the odd thing about mosses. The leafy green part that makes up the bulk of the plant, it has only half of its chromosomes, sort of like an unfertilized egg. In fact, the only part of a moss that has the full complement of genetic material is a skinny stalk called a sporophyte. And here's another peculiarity of mosses. Instead of making pollen like other plants, they produce sperm like animals. After a rain shower or heavy dew, sperm swim to another moss plant to fertilize its egg. Then a sporophyte with a full set of chromosomes grows on top of the second moss plant. As the sporophyte develops, it makes a bulbous capsule at its tip, filled with tiny spores, which again have only half their chromosomes. That is the most beautiful shade of green. And those are the spores. When conditions are right, the spores are released and carried away by the wind. If a spore lands in a site with enough light, moisture, and space, it will germinate and grow into a new moss plant. Mosses on exposed tree trunks tend to produce short sporophytes, which stick out far enough to disperse their spores. But mosses like this hair cap, which live on the ground where there's less air movement, need tall sporophytes to catch the wind. When my grandmother was a little girl, children used to loop sporophyte stems into their own capsules to make delicate necklaces, something they still do today.